देवियों सज्जनों आप सभी को बता दूं इस सत्र की अध्यक्षता कर रहे हैं श्री मुक्तानंद अग्रवाल जी कमिश्नर इंडस्ट्रीज सत्र में अन्य जो वक्तागण हैं उनमें हैं श्री आनंद सिंघल जी मिस्टर घतित लाहेरू जी मिस फूमि को बाया स्पीकर एंड वी आर फॉर्चुनेट टू हैव विद अस मिस जो सॉल्टर नॉन एग्जीक्यूटिव बोर्ड मेंबर खादी सी आई सी लंडन शील बी स्पीकिंग ऑन क्रिएटिंग अ सस्टेनेबल सप्लाई चेन फिट फॉर ग्लोबल मार्केट मिस जो इज द फाउंडर ऑफ अवार्ड विनिंग एथिकल क्लोथिंग ब्रांड वेयर डज इट कम फ्रॉम a speaker writer and a consultant on sustainable business she is an experienced ethical business entrepreneur and quite passionate about transparency and justice within product supply chain ms jo salter hello again um and thank you very much for having me back and sorry to the people that i've already spoken to <laughs> you'll hear some of it again um yes i run um where does it come from which is a clothing brand based in england in the united kingdom and i also am a board member of cardi london as well so i've got two hats on for this um just like my colleague from japan i'm going to try to give you the viewpoint for how things are in the uk and um give you some insight to how things are so i hope that will be of interest to you um so where does it come from as the name suggests it's all about transparency uh as i said yesterday we talk about making kind clothes that tell tales and that's kindness to um the people who are making the clothes and the farmers and it's kind to the planet to the environmental um work that goes on but also kind to the final person who's wearing the clothes because it's good for their physical health and it's good for their mental health as well because um they know the stories behind the clothes so that gives them that deeper connection which we believe leads to greater happiness so it's very very important uh we've been working with cardi we started our research in 2012 um i was introduced to cardi by uh miss shalini sheth amin um from moral fiber fabrics and since then i've fallen in love with cardi and the story and we've worked with it um we launched our first range in 2013 we sell direct to retail and we sell um through other businesses and to other businesses so we have a wholesale and a retail um work going on there um so cardi london my hat there is all about trying to spread the word of cardi within the uk and wider as well but specifically within the uk too so cardi is a very very important part of our story so a little bit more about um where does it come from my brand so i've just put some photographs of some of our products here so that you can see the ways that cardi has been used in our range so you can see this little girl she's wearing a cardi denim dress and um that one has been very popular design because it, you know how cold it gets in the united kingdom you can put a jumper underneath and you can wear it with different things um and that was work we did with moral fiber and using um cardi from uh udyogbati kvic um and we have done a range of organic cardi shirts with print on um which are suitable for men and women and scarves as well such as the one i'm wearing the ones the ladies are wearing here um as well so those are we consider the designs to be very basic designs very versatile designs it's not about fast fashion i am totally opposed to um the idea that you buy something and you wear it because it's in fashion it's seasonal and then you throw it away you buy something because you love it and you're going to keep wearing it and it gives you happiness for a long time the scarves that you can see at the bottom the yellow and the gray scarves those are cardi scarves that we made wholesale for a very big important customer that i can't tell you the name but they're a major um global software brand so you can maybe guess who they were but we did work that's um organic cotton uh from kamia and we worked with the label oshadi who hand wove that into the beautiful scarves and they really were absolutely lovely so that was an example of a high end product that we could um we could sell as well 
So our core ethics, um, our core, core ethos is traceability, telling the stories behind your clothes. Every garment that we create has a code on the label. You can see an example here on the screen. So the customer can scan it on their mobile phone and they can find out the whole story and they can see the photos um, and videos of the people who work on it. Um, and everything is about being ethical to the producers, the farmers, sustainable, looking after the planet, and the idea of connecting customers with their clothes um, is really, really important for us. Talking of labels, I put the label here, and you have to have, legally, you have to have information on your label about things like washing, how you wash your clothes, um, and how you dry your clothes, which is obviously very important, but I feel there isn't enough information about the stories of your clothes. So we've added a lot of information. This label says, made in India entirely from seed to garment, because you normally only have to put the final production place. So you could sew a button on in a country and say it was made there on the label. And then I've, often, I've also got put at the bottom, Cardi spun, woven, and dyed by hand on the label, because this is something, the label is something that goes with the garment for the customer forever, really. So we've heard a lot about um, sustainable fashion and how it is a growing movement. It's obviously um, something that is close to our hearts. As our colleague um, Kapil Shah said uh, yesterday, we have to go from where we are now. So there's this wonderful uh, Gandhian heritage that you all have, which is wonderful, but we, things have changed and moved on, and now perhaps the button to press, especially with the young people, is sustainability. It's a very important one, and it is growing. Uh, we have um, in the UK, in the United Kingdom, in our newspapers, when I started with where does it come from, sustainable, sustainable fashion wasn't really talked about in the news, now it's in the news every day. And for those of you that know these newspapers, some of these are newspapers that are very widely read by the, everybody in the population, and to have sustainable fashion mentioned in that is um, a very key one. Our most recent princess, Meghan Markle, she wears um, sustainable fashion, she promotes sustainable fashion, so it's very, very key. Uh, going back a few years, the starting up of fashion revolution was key in sustainability and ethics after the disaster in Bangladesh, Rana Plaza, where so many garment makers were killed. That woke people up to the, the, the problems with fast fashion. And then there's the climate crisis, of course, where people are looking into what their clothes are made of and biodegradability and wanting to know that there's no plastic. That's a big thing in the UK, no plastic. So having polyester in clothes is something that a lot of people are moving away from because they're realizing that that means plastic, basically. So that's quite key. One interesting thing is that the search phrase sustainable fashion over the last year on Google, people looked for it, it was up 250%. So that's a really important one. Um, one thing that's very big in the United Kingdom, a lot of talk of, and I don't know if it's the same in Japan, we have a term called greenwashing. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's a, lot, a lot of the big mainstream high street brands have realized that customers, particularly younger customers, are becoming interested in sustainability, and so they want to attract those customers to them. So what they tend to do is start using phrases like sustainable cotton or conscious fashion, and people who want to feel that they're doing the right thing will go and buy from these places and then their conscience is, they're happy, they, they're, um, they have peace of mind that they're buying sustainable. Um, but it isn't always very sustainable, or it might just be one part of the supply chain. Um, and I would argue personally that if you're still engaged in mass production and mass consumption and promoting those ideals, then you're not being very ethical or sustainable. That's my viewpoint on that one. Um, but what they do do really well is attract these customers. So they're using key phrases like sustainable cotton, like conscious collection, which pull people in. And I think that's something we could do an awful lot better, 
is try to find the right phrases that make people immediately attracted to that. At the bottom here, I've just got some figures of people who, when they were surveyed, said that they would actually pay more for eco-friendly products. So this is going across the generations. So for the um, Generation Z, who are aged 16 to 21, 58% said they would pay more for an eco-friendly product. The next people up, to age 22 to 35, 61%. And then back down again, so the older generation would, is less than half, would pay more for having um, an ethical, uh, eco-friendly product. So I thought that was quite interesting to see, that it's definitely the youth. And in, in the UK, in the United Kingdom, we don't have the youth um, numbers that you have. We have a much older population. However, I th that's all good news, but I think there are some things that we have to be realistic about as well. In the United Kingdom, the ethical clothing last year, the market was up to just under £50 million, which, okay, that's, that's not too bad, but you've got to bear in mind that the weekly spend, weekly spend of women's shoes was £62 million. So the annual spend was less than the weekly spend on shoes. Um, and... Uh, the people who are very interested in sustainability are very attracted to second hand. So uh, a lot of people do go now more, rather than buying in high street brands new, they go and buy second hand. So that's increased four times. So that's a, that's a, a, a challenge. We've talked about greenwashing already. Customer price expectations is uh, a challenge for us. Uh, people have been educated um, just from experience, especially younger people, that they don't have to pay very much for clothes and they expect to be able to go and buy a shirt for £5 or £10, um, which is not possible when you're looking at uh, some of the handcrafted issues there. We also have some challenges, a lot of challenges with our, our government in promoting sustainability. So last year uh, there was a government review of the impacts of fast fashion on workers and the environment. It took about eight months and lots of us, I contributed to the review and there was a list of recommendations and the main one being that every garment should have one penny added to the price to improve the sustainability and the government rejected every single recommendation. So it's not all good news, I'm afraid. You know this much better than me, but this is something that I talk about with supply chains, and I believe underpinning all of the supply chain has to be design. So everything has to be designed to be um, sustainable and versatile and everything. So for every part of this supply chain, from the cotton, um, the lady with the cotton at the top there, all the way through to the finished garment, there can be a number of different options available. So we heard yesterday about all the different um, types of cotton we can have. Um, we can have the, the beautiful um, organic and indigenous cottons, which I personally love. Um, and we can have a much more mass-produced version. We've heard about the spinning and the different... We can have the single um, loom spinning or we can have multiple looms. Mr. Prakash Shah was talking about a lot of technology we could use there and all the way through. Um, and there has to be options within each one. And um, my colleague from Japan was talking as well about have, having different levels within these things so it would give people options of the kind of products that they can have. You, the, the top of the range product might be completely handmade with the best cotton. Um, and if people understand that that is, the, that is the top of the range and then there are different value propositions all the way down. Also running the supply chain, it's very important as my colleague um, Lawrence was saying yesterday about creating documentation, creating records at each stage so that you can improve your processes and also build up trust by sharing that information with customers. So I think there's an awful lot we can do with this supply chain before we get to the end product. But um, don't underestimate how much people want to know about the supply chain. There's also technologies like blockchain that are becoming available now to people to help record what's going on in the supply chain and share that more widely. 
Um, this looks complicated. I promise I won't make it very complicated. I wanted to show the difference between the customer's perspective and the suppliers, so mostly you, your perspectives, and the things that concern you. And as a brand, I'm the one in the middle there trying to balance the two different sides. So the customers, and by customers I mean the end customer and the people who are buying it to sell to their end customers, so a wholesale customer, what they're concerned about are that they hit the buttons of sustainability. So all they want to do is to be able to say, this is sustainable. Um, the end customer price point. We need to educate customers an awful lot more about why they need to be paying more for these kinds of goods. Regularly campaigning for the eco-friendly clothing. And thank you so much for making us understand what is kind clothing. Now moving ahead with this request that please stick to the timeline. Our next speaker is Mr. Vinod Kumar Singla, Deputy General Manager, State Bank of India. Mr. Singla is responsible for growth of SBI, MSME business in the entire state of Rajasthan. He has more than 29 years of experience for managing various types 